Welcome. My apologies from the start that any humming you hear in the background is probably the cicadas that have come out and are in full bloom at the moment in our area and they're driving me nuts. Another thing that drives me nuts is the terrible pseudoscience that Suspicious Observer aka Ben Davison puts out and I found yet another fail in some of his presentations. So let's take a look at what he's done this time. In a recent video, Davidson claimed to have destroyed climate science in eight minutes and showed this rather garish slide as if that's some sort of proof of it. Now, in my last couple of videos, I have completely destroyed his point of view that the sun and cosmic rays are not effects that are being taken into account in the climate models because they have very little effect on the climate models. So those two points are wrong. In this video, I want to deal with the first two points in section A, failure to predict the future and failure to predict the past. So let's see what Davidson's been up to. Well, first of all, he has this the wrong way round. Failure to predict the past is the first thing because that's what's used to validate climate models. So given conditions over the last 100 years or so, you can put those conditions into the climate models and see whether they reproduce some of the main climate parameters that we're interested in. And indeed they do. You can see here that the agreement isn't great, so great for the older data, say before 1950, but that's because the older data is less accurate and more incomplete. But after the 1960s, when we have continuous data from just about all over the world, the models and the data agree very, very well. By the way, the yellow here is the individual uh, measurements made by different organizations. The red is the average of those simulations and black are the actual observations. And as you can see, it's very good from 1960 onwards. Also marked on here as a matter of interest are the four largest volcanic eruptions during that time. And you can see that the models take those into account very well. You see there's a cooling for about a year or so after each one of those eruptions and the models reproduce that cooling very nicely. Let's get back to Davidson's garish figure. As I said, we've already dealt with the sun and cosmic rays in previous videos. We've now dealt with failure to predict the past and the models do in fact predict the past. And as part of that, we showed they also do pretty well with volcanoes. So we can cross that one off the list as well. And let's deal with the main problem, which is failure to predict the future. Ben starts off by showing this particular plot, which is a output of 68 different simulations from 13 different models compared with the black line, which are the observations. These are from Roy Spencer, so they're already suspect. It seems to show a discrepancy between these models and the data, which in fact isn't true. The discrepancy is in Spencer's analysis. First of all, he's dealing with only part of the globe, not all of the globe. He uses surface atmospheric temperatures measured from his satellite data, which is the temperature of the atmosphere above the seas, but not actually the sea surface temperature, which is TOS, the temperature of the ocean surfaces. And what he doesn't mention here is that 50 of these 68 simulations are from one single model that has a known high temperature bias. So they've taken a deliberately biased temperature set included it here and then are comparing it actually with the wrong data. So what happens if you do this right? You get this. The blue colored curves at the top here of this plot are the uh, from the models that have the high temperature bias. You can see they're all at the top end of that uh, plot. The models that are at least fairly good are the red ones. And now you have the sea surface temperature from two different, two different sources there in blue and green. And you see they sit perfectly in the middle of those red simulations. So the simulations are in fact doing a very good job of reproducing the future climate. So now we can cross off both of these at the top here. Now, most of the other ones are just read statements of the same thing over and over again. So I won't deal with those. I may come back and deal with the urban heat island effect uh, sometime in the future. So let's draw some conclusions from all of this. When you compare like with like, you actually get fairly good agreement. Davidson's claim that the models can't predict the past is shown to be false. 
Davis's claim that the models can't predict the future is also shown to be false. And in looking at this, we've also shown that they are able to handle volcanoes with an E, Ben, with an E. So until next time, stay safe and goodbye.